Today we're heading outside of San Jose, Costa Rica, north to a place that we're very excited to visit, and that is the Hacienda Alsacia Starbucks Coffee Farm. Starbucks owns 240 acres here in Costa Rica where they produce their coffee beans, and today we're taking a tour of the farm to see exactly where our coffee beans are coming from. I'm, I'm from Costa Rica, but I've, I've been in Atlanta for 21 years now. Still Costa Rican. Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Right. And from which part of the country? Uh, San Isidro. Perez de Leon. Perez de Leon. Yeah. Nice. Nice. A big Good. coffee place also. Yeah, also yeah. a coffee place. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you guys drink coffee? We love coffee. Yeah. And you go to Starbucks and... We are addicted to Starbucks. That's one of them. It's also... Uh, it's also shown on the Starbucks mug, so that's how significant it is. So you're in the perfect place. <laughs> I'm gonna give you an umbrella, okay? So I don't know if you knew, but coffee can only grow in a specific area we call the coffee belt. Mm -hmm. Coffee belt is between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. So you can only grow coffee in this area because of the soil, the altitude, and the climate. We're gonna split out the belt in three different regions. Because each region has a different way to process coffee, also a different tradition and different access to water. Uh, we're going to start off with Africa because this is where coffee comes from, actually Ethiopia. And um, coffee was discovered there around 800 after Christ. And then, thanks God, what is first to the rest of the world. So Africans have other countries like Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Congo, and well, they don't have a really good access to water. So they will, they, they will do the dry or the natural process. This means that they're gonna grab the cherry, put them in the sun, and after two to three months, more or less, the, the cherry will get dried like a raisin. They will peel it off and continue with the bean. This is Asia Pacific. So here in Asia, <laughs> we have China, Vietnam, Indonesia, Sumatra, Papua New Guinea, India and Hawaii. Hawaii is the only place in the United States that produces coffee, uh, but it's closer to Asia than to Latin America, so it's located here. They're gonna do the same my wash process, so this means that they're gonna use water, but just a small amount. We got Latin America, that's where we are located right now. That's the best coffee in the world. Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, also we have the biggest producer of coffee in the world. Can you guess which country is? Is it, it's not Brazil. Yeah, it's Brazil. Is it Brazil? Yeah, yeah, size. Costa Rica is number 14 because we're a tiny country. We're, yeah, very small. Yeah, but we're, we're in the top 20 list. <laughs> so yeah, in this um, region, we're gonna do the full wash process because we have really good access to water. Now here, of course, there's Guatemala, Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, many countries that produce coffee. And from the three regions, we're talking about more or less 72 countries that produce coffee around the world. From the 72 countries, Starbucks will buy to 36 of them. Not all of them, because not all of them will uh, apply to our standards or quality. But 80, 80% 80 of the coffee that Starbucks will buy, will buy it here. So most of our coffee comes from Latin America, then will be Asia, and the less amount from Africa. In Alsacia, which is Alsace, it's from a region in France, which actually produces really famous wine. So, um, like the grandparents of the last owner came from Alsace. They bought the farm, well, he bought the farm in 1970, he grew it with coffee, and he wanted to remember his family. So that's why he named it Alsacia. Then when Starbucks bought it to him, we decided to keep the date. You can see the sack. 1970 and the original name of Alsace. And we designed our logo that you can see it here. The three little dots represent the coffee cherries. These will be the leaves of the tree. All together the A of Alsace. And just right in the middle the waterfall. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. 
Okay, yes. okay now it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit complex. <laughs> All the research and development we're doing here is, well, hybrids of coffee trees that will produce coffee of a better quality, a little bit more quantity than regular ones in the same amount of land, and then a coffee that is more resistant or tolerant to natural diseases. So that people don't have to use a lot of chemicals and pesticides. Inside of a cherry, as I told you before, there's usually two coffee beans, kind of a rounded shape. Sometimes you can get just one or three, which is not common. Like when a woman is pregnant with triplets, I mean, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, and with one bean, you can decide to do two things. Number one, plant it to have a future baby tree that will give you coffee in the future, or Peel it, continue the process, and get a cup of coffee. When you peel it, you can get to see the bean. There you go. So this is the parchment. Mm -hmm. Then you have the coffee bean, and it has another really thin skin on top, which sometimes is really hard to take off. So I don't know if you can see it here. If you peel it, oh, yeah. you see? You can see the green coffee bean. So coffee beans are green, they're not brown. And they get brown when you roast them because they do a chemical reaction and change the color to brown. That's called Maillard <laughs> reaction. And it's the same thing, I don't know if you guys eat meat, but it's the same thing that happens to meat. It's red when it's raw, then you cook it, gets brown. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So when we want to plant it, we don't peel it off. So those two layers will be a protection for the bean. So when you plant it like this, you wait two months and it will pop up. Finally, you have the matchstick or the seedling. This is called the soldier stage because it has a green uniform, a helmet, and it's extended. So it's one year to have a baby coffee tree. When you get this, this is ready to be planted in the coffee fields. But then you have to wait one more year to have your first harvest. Okay. which is not good okay not in quantity or quality or taste because they're too young they are not going to give you the best qualities of the cherries so you got to give them two to three years more okay. this means that from the bean to your first high quality harvest it can be three to five years and during those years you have to take care of them prune them compost uh, everything and not get even a dollar back so it's a really hard business. Just That's like why. A kid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, but yes. And then in Costa Rica, because every country is different, the harvest will be once a year. So you gotta work the whole year for around four to five months of coffee cherries. And we're gonna go up to the coffee fields to see a little bit more growing up trees. And of course, I'm gonna show you how to pick coffee and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so Starbucks, because a matter of preference, will only buy Arabica coffee. And actually Costa Rica is 100% Arabica. There's around a thousand different varieties of Arabica. Everything tastes like coffee, but it's like wine or apples, as we were talking before. They'll have a different aroma, flavor, and it's a different cup of coffee. So because this is a research and development form, we have more than 400. So this is one, this is another one, this is another one. And as you can see, there's coffee that gets ripe in color red and coffee that gets ripe in color yellow. Do you have people coming to pick this one up? Or yeah, not? actually it's the people on the tours. <laughs> yeah, and we make them work. And <laughs> us, also, us. Always rainy, there was always mosquitoes. Yeah. Then you have a big basket that you have to fill with those little tiny grains so to me i'm not a patient person i hated it every single day i hated it <laughs> i love coffee but i i will it just it's a hard job yeah it's, it's a, a really hard, hard job yeah yeah and this is actually uh well, um, i have a basket for, mm. so you're gonna get a basket <laughs> but i promise you just for the picture <laughs> But yeah, exactly. All of the fruit that you see were flowers in some time. And it's exactly like a pregnant woman like me. You see the flower, nine months later, you see the cherry where the flower was. Oh, so that's between the flower and the cherry, nine months? Wow. Exactly. <laughs> 
so uh, because not all the flowers bloom at the same time, not all the cherries get ripe at the same time. And that's why you can see green coffee cherries in between and ripe. Mm -hmm. Which ones do you pick? The red ones. Yeah, the ripe ones, mm -hmm. even though they're red or yellow. So this is the basket, uh, <laughs> as Enrique was saying. This is una cajuela. This is una cajuela, yes. So Costa Rica has the Institute of Coffee of Costa Rica, which is the one that regulates the activity and we measure and we pay by volume because the higher the altitude you grow coffee the heavier the bean so coffee from here is heavier than coffee from Perez Leon. and it wouldn't be fair if you do it by weight so we do it by volume with boxes first box is named uh, cajuela and it's more or less the same size of this so you get paid by the amount of cajuelas you pick in eight hours a day, a day. not by the hours you work mm -hmm. Right now, one cajuela in Costa Rica is around 1,300 colones, that's like $2. Oh my God! Yeah, so you gotta fill this thing up wow. for $2. So I want you to pick, you got one minute. To pick Choose one minute, pick as much as you can, okay. and only ripe. Well, only, you know, yes. They gotta be like this. So like anywhere? a pretty, pretty ripe red wine color. Yeah. Is that a minute? Because I want it to be a minute. <laughs> no, but it's totally fine. Let's, let's see how you're doing. Okay. okay. That one is not This right. is not good. Mm -hmm. It's pretty normal because you can see it like yeah. this and it looks right, but then... You turn it yeah. halfway. So <laughs> if you pick a lot of this or green, they're not gonna... I mean, it's gonna be used. And I have a say, and every coffee has a home. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not the main thing you want. You want quality. And quality starts with coffee pickers in the field picking the best cherries mm -hmm. like this. So now we're gonna come to the meal. I'm gonna take the basket off there okay. so you can see how they measure the coffee. Oh, there. Thank you. You can come work whenever you want. <laughs> oh, this is the cajuela. This is a micro meal, so after the eight hours, we measure with this, we pay the coffee pickers, and then all the cherries will come in a big truck or tractor to the mill to continue the process. So when my mom used to produce like big amount of coffee, I remember we will take all the coffee to uh, al, ¿cómo se llama? Beneficio. Al, al beneficio. Yeah, wet mill. Uh, yeah, and then they will like, she will get a part of the money at that time and or like some like certificate saying this is how much coffee you you brought us but then months later she will get a payment and then months later she will get a payment yes. so it's not like if you collect it today you're and you bring it here today you're gonna get all the money no it's it, it wow. depends actually and what i wanted to tell you is that when we opened the former support center it started, started a verification which is called coffee practices that means coffee and former equity practices so it's like a checklist with requirements and if you don't follow them Starbucks is not gonna buy you the coffee the price right now in Costa Rica is two dollars by the e-cafe anyone that is selling coffee to Starbucks in Costa Rica should pay 30 to 40 percent more well Costa Rica or any other part of the world so right now in the farm we're paying a little bit more almost three dollars which is better price and they can get a little bit more money then there is 100% zero tolerance to child labor. No kid, it's allowed to work in a farm where Starbucks is buying coffee from zero to 15 years old. And the farmers have to give those kids social benefits of any type. We have three acres down next to the farmer support center. So we give them education, food, medical services, wow. and dental care for free. Yeah. So it's really nice because I know you're big fans of Starbucks. I was before I worked here but sometimes you don't know what is actually behind well, You know, brand. that makes a little bit more sense, like when you pay the price, it's like, oh, okay, so it's not just somebody got robbed out of two uh, cajuela de café, and here I'm buying, I'm paying $9 for just a pound. Yeah, yeah and, so and also the quality of the right, coffee you're right. drinking. You can taste the difference. Yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, all, all the things that we're gonna do here is the same we do up there. 
and we're gonna try to use less amount of water because water even though I told you wash process it's to make the cherries move not to wash them because you want to peel them off so we're gonna make something fun I'm gonna give you a cherry you can sanitize it there's hand sanitizer there you want Okay. So this is the skin. Mm -hmm. Now, if you squeeze it, mm -hmm. you get two, two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now there is a worm. This is normal. <laughs> okay. So skin. Then I stick to the skin. There is the pulp. This is what you can actually eat. It just tastes like. It tastes like red bell peppers. Yeah, oh my god, that is so true. Say. And I never like even put the two together. Yes, it's exactly like <laughs> red bell peppers. Sweet, people get shook here on the tours and are like, but these oh. two things like coffee. <laughs> you still have one, don't worry. And I'm like, no, it's it's a fruit, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you eat a lot, you get diarrhea and stomachache. Because it has too much sugar. Mm, definitely taste the pepper, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then, if you suck the bean, just suck it, don't eat it. It's sweet. It's sweeter than the... Yeah. And I don't know if you have tried Mamoncino, mm -hmm. lychee. Yes, I gave him, uh, you don't remember, I, I gave it to you in Costa Rica. Well, in the US, lychee or rambutan, kind mm -hmm. of the same texture of that fruit. Okay. So you spit this out? Yeah. And you can throw it here in the... <laughs> So when the cherries are down in the tank, we open the three pipes to get water and the water will start making the cherries move, basically. So we open a little door in the corner, actually you can see that it's kind of open. And the cherries will move and drop in the second level. When people is picking coffee, they can drop the cherries in the ground, so when they pick them back up, they can pick a rock. I don't want you to have a rock in your coffee, but so this is a way to separate it. If you take a look inside, there's walls. So when the cherries come with the water, this will do something like this. The rocks will sink at the bottom and the coffee cherries will float with the water. Okay, from here, the next step will be cherries continue the way down to that green canal. Okay, they drop at the end in a water pump and the water pump will throw everything up. So if you follow the grape pipe in the wall, uh -huh. all the fruit will drop in this machine. Water will go back up to be recycled. So here. When the cherries start coming down this way, this will be spinning really fast. It's this. We call them camiseta, t-shirt, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and if you see, it's like a cheese grater. So because it's a spinning really fast, it will take off all of the skin and the pulp. And then if you take a look inside, there is a, like a red auger that will catch the slimy beans and transport them to the machine next. So this yellow one, it's a demu demucilaginator. It's a hard word. <laughs> this is basically a pressure washer so just water and pressure will take off the uh, slimy part of the bean. All of that fruit that we call brosa al café, no, transla no translation in English, <laughs> will go up to that agar to a cart. And we're gonna do compost. And that's the fertilizer for the coffee trees of the farms. Whoa. So they continue the way down and they drop in those green carts and they will be ready to get dry. Oh, so this okay. is the most regular way to dry coffee in Costa Rica. We're gonna pour the wet parchment beans here. And when the sun comes up, they will start getting dry. And every 30 minutes, someone will be in charge of breaking. I don't know if it's harder to pick coffee or doing this. Because there's one guy all day long under the sun breaking the beans. And they're bigger than this. So they grab a raker, and I don't know if you have seen the sand gardens, they do the same. So they walk, making lines, so the beans will move and get dried uniformly. And uh, if it's a lot of coffee, so maybe an hour and a half, two hours they finish, they have to go all over again. Mm -hmm. 
if you take a look, this look all the same size, same color. They're pretty consistent. But if you take a look to this ones, different colors, sizes, and it doesn't look really nice, right? Mm -hmm. So the table in the middle, first quality coffee, this. And this is second and third quality. We're gonna export the best to the United States anyway, right? Because they don't grow coffee. So um, in Costa Rica, there is a law and around 15% 15, uh, 15 of the first quality coffee that we produce has to stay inside of the country. Then the rest can be exported. the machine and she and they wouldn't be anything without the other one it's like uh, it's the only artisanal roastery is taco class in a whole world so because we're buying coffee from all the regions you know we got industrial roastery actually there's one in there is Kent Georgia mm -hmm. Kent, mm -hmm. there is one in Georgia I don't know specifically where but there's one there then there's another one in Seattle so there's six in the United States and then there is another one in uh, Amsterdam, Holland. So basically like all the coffee from Latin America will get roasted in the United States. Okay. And then coffee from Africa and Asia will get roasted in Holland. So light is an enemy of coffee. So you, you want this type of material so the light doesn't come in and ruin the beans. Then this bulb, have you seen it? This is called label lock. This was actually invented by Starbucks. It's patentized by Starbucks. But many other companies have the same system. So through this valve, the gases will keep going out and the oxygen wouldn't come in. So it's always good quality coffee. And then, uh, as I was telling you, keep it inside. If the bag has these two things, if it doesn't have these two, I wouldn't even buy it. Okay. Not a good sign. So it can be the best coffee, but if it's cracked wrong, I mean, there's no point. Thank you.